giving us health and for giving us strength, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, because truly this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice in it and be glad. For truly, Lord God, brand new mercies every morning. And we thank you for it, Father. We don't take it for granted in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, come into the service today. We know that your presence is already here. But we invite you to take your rightful place in the name of Jesus. Lord God, get on the throne of our heart in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, let a word come forth this morning. Lord God, there will be a word of deliverance, Lord God. No one here will leave the same in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, because truly you are a friend. And truly, Lord God, you called us to be a friend of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. The sound is good, just a little feedback, so we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. this song, you, hallelujah. Victory Belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. How many people believe that victory belongs to Jesus? Yes, it does. How many yes, people does. believe that victory belongs to Jesus? Hallelujah. See, somebody's clapping and waving, amen, giving God praise, hallelujah. because we know that victory belongs to Jesus. It's not to you, it's not to me, but it belongs to Jesus. Amen? We have victory in Jesus. Amen? We have victory through Jesus, but victory belongs to Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah! Minister Anderson, just relax and let the Lord use you, brothers. Minister.
deliverer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the provider. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, we do. Give him the honor. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. For victory belongs to Jesus. Come on, somebody. Bless the name. Come on. Can we lift up the name of Jesus? Can we make some noise in the camp? Can we make some noise in the camp? Our God is alive. The Son of the Lord.
Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning celebration. Our core value says, God deserves, God deserves nothing less, nothing less than, than my best. Than my best. People matter to God. People matter to God. Therefore, therefore, people matter to me. People matter to me. And happy birthday and happy anniversary to all those born or married in the month of September. Amen. Amen. And we're going to continue to pray and remember the people of Lahaina in Maui and do what you can for to help them out. Everyone is asked to join the prayer conference line at least once a week, Monday through Friday. Pick a day. And the number is 267-807-9611. Access code is 178-408-POUND. But praise God, every Wednesday at 12 o'clock noon to 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. is our Bible study here at Ark of Jesus Ministries. Neighbors, friends, family, co-workers, everyone is invited to a journey in God's Word. On Saturday, September the 16th, this Global Impact Saturday, whatever you can do to uplift the name of Jesus in your own neighborhood, or if your church service has something going on, join in and lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Saturday, September the 16th, Bishop David J. and elect Lady Dawn E. Singleton will be celebrating 47 years of marriage. <laughs> Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Saturday, Sunday, September the 17th, at 11 a.m., Ark of Jesus Ministries will be going to Lakeshore Community Church for a Rochester Together service, where there will be five churches coming together in worship at 3651 Ladder Road. All who can make it. But Bishop wants to remind us that is not doing the 9 a.m. service, but at 11 a.m. So we're looking for you at the ark at 9 a.m. 11 o'clock, we'll be gathering at Lakeshore. Amen. October 2023 is Pastoral Appreciation Month. Let's plan well to thank God for and celebrate our pastor. Okay. Our leader tip. Our leadership tip says, it's great to be an entrepreneur and provide direction, but when you get big enough, you've got to delegate. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I've learned the hard way, says Donna C. Byrne. Mm -hmm. When you get big enough, you've got to delegate. Mm -hmm. A couple of announcements. Rayma Life Community Church is having its um, catechism classes. Time to begin. They start on Tuesday, September 12th at 7 p.m. at Raymond Life Church, located at 40 West Avenue. The cost is $75, which includes books, all homework assignment, and 22 weeks of teaching. The announcement of flyers will be posted on the boards outside in the vestibule and along the hall corridor. So take the time to look at the announcements and keep them in mind. And we're we'll turning at this time into the hands of our own Bishop David J. Singleton. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. How many of you are blessed and you know that you're blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed we are. I'm honored to be here today. Would you join me in welcoming our global audience? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just bless God for them. Thank God for each and every one in our global audience. Thank God for all the guests, the members, the friends, all that it takes to make up this gathering on today. Amen. Again, I want to thank God for everybody who's held me up before the Lord in prayer. Uh, it's a blessing to be able to stand up and talk. I'm not talking about preaching, just talking is a blessing. Amen. Um, but, but God has been gracious and um, 
I, you all will be very proud of Lady Singleton. She, right. she took care of her husband all this time. We had children and then a host of you. I just thank God for everybody and everybody. Amen. We're getting ready to go into the Word. I'll tell you, uh, during those weeks, and this is my first time since June 4th. Amen. Amen. And uh, during wow. those weeks, God just blessed us. Every speaker came with a dynamic word. Amen. Amen. Every last one of them, God used to bless this house and bless our global audience. And I'm just forever indebted to our awesome God. Amen. Understand, this is really his work. It's not mine. All right. Amen. He's the only one that can keep it going. Amen. He's the one who started it. Amen. And he's the one who will finish it. I'm just honored to be in his service. Amen. 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 And I'm honored to work with such precious people that God would allow me to serve among you. Amen. I am honored. God Amen. bless you. We love you, Bishop. Amen. 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 I love you more. All right, well, we're going to get ready to go into the Word on today, and um, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to uh, go to Romans 8.28, Romans 8.28, I'll be reading that from the King James Version, and that will be followed by Genesis chapter 2, starting in verse 1, so Romans chapter 8 verse 28 and then we'll be going over to Genesis chapter 2 starting in verse 1 both passages will come from the King James Version okay. amen when you have it say amen, amen. all right um, if you can and if you would rest upon your feet with me I'll ask you to do that now we know that that might be a little difficult for some Thank God for those of us we're able. Amen? Amen. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to pray. After I pray, we'll make a faith confession. After the faith confession, I will read the word of the Lord in your hearing. You can feel free thereafter to have your seat in his presence. Let's pray. Father, we honor and thank you for this opportunity and privilege to be in the house of prayer one more time. Thank you for everyone who thought it not robbery to arise from their sleep and their slumber to come and join and fellowship with others, even not only in this sacred space, but also in the global space. And Father, I pray you'll send forth your word unchecked and unhindered by any force. Pray that our ears would hear and our hearts would receive your word. That the good seed of your word, God, would germinate in our hearts and produce fruit that are bound to your glory good fruit, abundant fruit, and remaining fruit. And so in advance, we call it done. We declare that we have victory in Jesus' name. And all in agreement with this prayer said, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to hold them up with me now and repeat after me. Say, this is the word of God. This is the word of God. It is life, it is life to, me. to me. And because of God's faithfulness, and because of God's faithfulness to, his word, to his word, and my obedience, my obedience to, him in faith, to him in faith, I now walk in love, I now walk in love and the blessings, and the blessings of, abundant of abundant life. While you're still standing, I'm going to read Romans 8.28. King James Version has it recorded on this wise. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. Our support text, that's our foundation text. Our support text comes from Genesis chapter 2. I'll pick it up in verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. All right. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which he had, in, which he had created and made. I'd like you to bear this thought in mind with me. It's a word that my deacon have used quite a bit. 
And uh, it's just a four letter word. Uh, and the word is done. That's right. That's yeah, you know, different projects we have going on around here. And he'll tell you it's done. I kind of like that word. And that's going to be the title of this message series. The word is done. D-O-N-E. Look at somebody and say, it is, it is done. done. Come on here. Amen. Amen. Come on, you can put your hands together and give the Lord a clap offering. And feel free to have your seat in his presence. Amen. The word done. D-O-N-E. Now, done as an adjective bespeaks of something that is complete. Yes. It is ended, finished, mm -hmm. over. It no longer exists. I'm going to ask you to bear that, that uh, definition in mind as we go through this series of lessons. That it's already done. I believe far too often we feel like things need to be done and as a result of it we get anxiety, we get impatient, we get troubled and bothered because we feel like something needs to be done that somehow we forget it's already done. You see, when you when it's something you desire and you know it's already done, you can rest in it. But if you believe it's not done, it needs to be done, it needs to get done, you want it to come around, amen, then it can cause you some discomfort. Amen, amen. Yeah. It is so. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let me share with you done as an acronym or an acrostic. D-O-N-E. All right? Divinely orchestrated, nicely established. Okay. Yeah. Divinely oh, orchestrated, right. nicely established. So let's break that down a little bit. When we talk about divinely, we're talking about God. We're talking about our awesome God who did this, right? right. Orchestrated is something he makes happen. He, he was the creator of it. He caused it to happen. We say nicely, nicely is anything that's good, and then we say established, it's already set. All right. Yes, it is. All right? So this word done is divinely orchestrated, nicely established. You need to know that God has divinely orchestrated some things on your behalf, and it's already nicely established. All right. All right. Yes, it, is. it is so. It is so. And so I have a question for you today before we get too far into the message. Well, let me share with you my objective and then I have a question for you. My objective is that at the end of this series of lessons and perhaps even on today, you will recognize that it's already good. Right. That it's already good. Things don't have to get good to be good. All right, all right. They don't have to look good to be good. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe I got some witnesses in here. Sometimes we've been in situations and some things happen a certain way, and we didn't know it was good. We thought it wasn't good until we got further down the line, and then we found out it was good. Yeah. Okay, okay, let me go to the Bible and, and give you a Bible uh, an example of that. There is the son that's called the prodigal. He's home with dad and the rest of the family. They're living good. Yeah. But he feels like his friends are the one who has it good. All right. And so he tells dad, dad, hey, just give me what's mine. Let me go and do me. Let me go do my thing. Right. And so dad said, okay. I, now I imagine dad talked to him a little bit. I don't know what wasn't there, but... I imagine he talked to him a little bit and then he said, okay, son, yeah. You know, and he broke him off something and son went on with a fat pocket. Glory to God. Him and his dudes, they got together and they lived it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. They did it their way. But after a while, his money ran out. His friends got thin. His belly got empty. 
Here he is hungry, feeding swine or pigs or hogs, if you will. And the word lets us know he was tempted, as it were, to eat what they were eating. So when he got in that predicament, he recognized, wait a minute, this isn't good. What was good is where I was when I was with daddy. I was, it was good at home. And he determined, wait a minute, I'm going to go back home. I'm going to tell my dad I sinned against him and against God. And I just want him to forgive me. And if he'll even let me come in as a hired servant, I'll be all right. Yeah, he don't have to take me on as a son. He can take me on as a servant. Just let me back in the house because this right here is not good. Who know what I'm talking about? You Things were good in your life, but you didn't realize it was good. You messed around and made some moves, but thank God you got a revelation out of the move you made. And you found out, hey, what you had was better than what you have at that time. Yes, 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 yes. So, so as as uh, Romans eight twenty eight says, Bible say, and we know. Yes. So it's not we imagine, we hope, we wish. It says we know. Yeah. What do we know? We know that all things work together for good to them that are called. And those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose, right? How many of y'all love God before we go in there further? Just, just wait a minute. If you don't love God, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So, so, now, so now we submit we love God. How many of you then believe? Now, I couldn't see your hands in my global audience, but I want y'all to be participators, not just spectators. All right? So now I'm asking you. I still won't see your hand, but you can put a thumbs up. What else they got? Little hearts. You can say me. That's right. right. Amen. What camera is on me? Is it the one over here on the red? Okay, all of them. Hey, y'all. Okay. Um, so, so in my global audience, how many of you love God? Come on, do something. Do something. Do something. Amen. You're part of this. Now, you might say, well, I'm seeing it late. Doesn't matter. Still want to hear from you. Okay. All right. Second question. How many of you believe that you are called according to God's purpose? That God has an actual purpose for you being on this side of heaven? Okay. And my global audience, y'all talking to me? Amen. Why only one camera red? That makes me think that's the good camera over there. But that's all right. Okay. All right. Okay. So Romans 8.28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. All means what? All. All. Everything is all inclusive. And I believe we need to lock in on that. So my question to you today, my question is, do you believe that Romans 8.28 is true? Yeah. I'm allowing y'all to talk in church. Amen. At least to answer my question. Amen. Now all together, do you believe it's true? Yes. All the, the, the dissenters, do you believe it's not true? Okay, no dissenters. Okay. Just thought I'd check it out. Let me tell you, the problem for me, as I see it, is that we have trouble believing it's good when it don't happen like we thought it should have happened. We have trouble believing and it's good when things unexpected roll out. You know, we, we like to be in the know. We like to be in control. And I understand all of that. That's true for me as well. But what I've learned is that even when I'm not in control, there's a God who is. And he's watching out for me when I can't watch out for myself or when I don't even know to watch out for myself. Amen. What I've learned is his will concerning you and concerning me is only good and not evil. Even though sometimes we've done some stuff that deserves some judgment, God's will toward us is still good. And I read through the text that his mercy is renewed, renewed every morning. So even when I messed up on yesterday, when I wake up today, he got some new mercy for me. And I don't have to stress over yesterday mess up. I just want to clean up today. Yes, yes, yes. 
It's done. It's done. It doesn't, doesn't have to get done. It's already done. It's already done. So how do we how do we conclude it's already done? Well, let's look at Genesis there. Genesis 1, and some of us are familiar with the book of Genesis meaning first, and you can find a lot of first in the Bible right there in the book of Genesis. And so in Genesis 1, we find the creative account. Amen. We find the creative account. This is in the spiritual context, if you will. But also, we read in chapter 2, and it discloses to us what just happened in chapter 1. So in chapter 2, what we picked it up in verse 1, it says, this is how the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. How were they finished? It says that on the seventh day, God had ended his work and uh, which he had made, he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Let me share with you where I'm coming from. I believe and declare that God has already done everything he needs to do. Amen. Amen. Now, I know we're praying, oh, come on, Jesus, and help me. Come on, Jesus, Jesus. Come on. Yeah, we sing the song and everything else. Let me tell you something. That may be your belief. That's not mine. I believe God already has the help for me before I have the problem. Come on here. I believe my healing is already secured before I ever got sick. I believe my deliverance is already there before I ever got bound. I believe my blessing is already there before I realize I need a blessing in that area. I believe that God has already gone before us and done what he said he would do. I don't believe God is waiting on us to, to fall down and get a bruise and say, oh man, I got a heal that knee. It's all stuffed up. No, 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 no. Why? Because the Bible say he finished his work, which he created and made, and he rested on the seventh day. He rested, so it's already done. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm telling you today, you and I need to get a hold of this, that God has already worked it out for us. It is divinely orchestrated. It is nicely established. Listen, when that, I, I got some, my God, let me tell you. Okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down um, Common Boulevard. I just made that up. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. But for today's lesson is real. All right. Common Boulevard, by the way, if y'all want to know where that is, that's where all of us have the same story. We've all been there. All right. Amen. Every one of us have been in a situation where if it wasn't for the Lord or somebody, because you might not have known it was the Lord. I'm telling you it was the Lord. If it wasn't for the Lord, you wouldn't be here today as well as you are. Somebody would be locked up. Somebody would be busted up. Somebody would be drugged up. Somebody would be dead. Come on here. Amen. Because every one of us got a story to tell. And whether it was the almost accident that didn't happen, whether it was the court situation that we made it through, whether it was the drug situation or whatever the substance was, or you, you name it, the shots that we took, the cuts on our lives, the beatings we endured. Amen. We're here today, and it's not because of us. We're here because we've been on Common Boulevard, glory to God. And now we know it was only the Lord. Come on here, somebody. Come on, come on. Y'all know we wasn't that good. We should have died, but we didn't die. Why? Because there's a God who said high and looks low. There's a God who's seen us and known us from our beginning to this present day. And he loved us then. He loves us now. And he loves us in our tomorrow. Come on. My God. Somebody say it's done. I don't, I don't like seeing. I don't like seeing believers troubled. And it's not God's will for you to be stressing. Yes. It's God's will for you to be resting in it. 
Come on here. God, God wants you to trust him. Glory to God. He wants you to believe what he said and trust him that he has you. Far too often, we're more inclined to trust in the creature than the creator. So when folks say, I got you, you feel like I'm good because they got me. The doctors say, you're going to be all right. We're liable to rest in that. And we're going to be all right. But they tell us we can take care of this. We can fix this. We said, okay. I don't have no problem. My doctor say he can take care of this. We could. We're in the courtroom and the, the attorney says, hey, we can win this. And you feel like, all right, I'm good. But then the creator who made the creature. Has declared all kinds of things to us. And somehow we end up stressing when we ought to be resting in what he said, even though we can't see him, his word stands steadfast and sure. You see, there are some folk that the doctor said, We're going to take care of this, you're going to be all right. But they weren't able to take care of it. They said, Hey, we went in and we seen something we didn't see earlier, and now we got to come with a different plan. All right, all right. Yeah, the attorney said, I got you. And then folks still went to jail. They still lost in the courtroom. They lost the lawsuit, they lost the case. He does. Let me tell you about the God that I'm talking about today. His word has never fallen. He has never failed. And there are multiple millions multiplied by millions that can testify today that God has been there. God has seen me through. God has honored his word. I didn't deserve it, but he blessed me anyway. I didn't earn it, but he still was there on my behalf. Who is it that been down Common Boulevard that can say, that's me. God did it for me. If it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be in my right mind. Who am I talking to? Who can witness these realities? Yes, it's it's done. My God, my God, it's done. He's got you. Look at your neighbor and say he got you. He got you. We gotta know there's some folk walked up here today in here today. There's some folk in my global audience. And you are quite concerned about some stuff that's going on in your circle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's your own personal body. And yes. some folk been going to the doctors and sometimes they're not getting answers. And, you know, common, uh, uh, the common occurrence is that uh, human thoughts default to the negative. Mm -hmm. So when we're not getting answers, we think it's something bad. Amen. Even though there's a phraseology among men that says no news is good news, <laughs> folks still default to the negative that no news is, they just don't want to tell me. Jesus, come on, teach it, teach it, teach it. <laughs> Come on here, y'all know I know what I'm talking about. Amen. We act like or feel like, and let me tell you something, precious sir. Listen, your faith works whether you realize you're working it or not. Sometimes when we think we're working faith, we're trying to stretch it and direct it and believe for certain things. So I'm believing for my house. I'm believing for my spouse. I'm believing for my job. I'm believing for my car. I'm believing for this, that, and the other. And we do this very intentionally and purposefully. But let me tell you something. There are so many times we're exercising faith and don't realize that that's what we're doing. But faith will work whether you recognize you're directing it or not. You say, you say, how, 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 how could you say such? Well, let me tell you, first off, your faith will work to your benefit or your detriment. It just depends on how you direct it. Your benefit is to your good. Your detriment is to your loss. Are you hearing so when you're believing that something is wrong and bad, nobody told you it's bad, but you already think it's bad. You work in your faith toward bringing something bad into your life. Oh, did he say that? Yes, he did. And he'll say it again. When you're believing for the 
the negative. You're believing for the loss. You're believing for the hardship. You're believing for the trouble. You are stretching your faith to see those things manifest in your life. Amen. Yeah, so what you gonna do about that? Come on now. You see, when you understand that it's already done, yes, yes. you gotta deal with the doctors and the medical profess for professionals, and, and you don't know what's going on in the bigger sense of things. You know your pain, your symptoms, you know what it seemed like, and most of us try to be Google doctors. All right. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know, and, and, and instead of getting, a, you know, a, a real medical book, they run right over to Google. Come on in. Amen. And, and, and what you and I ought to do when you don't know and when you can't figure it all out, we got to say, God, you got it. Amen. Yes. Yes. Lord, you know, I'm believing you. Yes. I'm trusting yes. you on this. Yes. I'm your child, God. For me to be good, I know it's only going to come through by you. Right. Now, you can use the doctors and the medical professionals in the process, uh -huh. but understand it's you. Amen. Yes. 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 See, it's, it's important for us to be able to distinguish the source from the resource. Come on, come on, say that. Amen. Yes. It's important for us to be able to distinguish the source from the resource. So the source is where it actually emanates from. The resource is the uh, conduit that it comes through. Are you hearing? So I know most of y'all yeah. And in my global audience, y'all been to the store. I can tell. <laughs> Grocery store or something, right? Those packages you get were put together at the manufacturing place. Yes, right. yes. The store was just the place that distributed to you. All right now. Yes, yes. Are you hearing? That's where you went to get it. But that's not where it got started. So the store was a resource. The manufacturing houses where it actually came together. Yeah. All right? So, so you and I today, we have to resolve that no matter what's going on in life, the work concerning our lives is finished. Yes, it is. It's done. Yeah. God doesn't have to do anything else. And we need to believe him for good and not evil. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I've, I've had the liberty to and the blessed privilege to counsel folk in marriage and even though this month lady singleton and i will seven will, will celebrate 47 years of marriage um we don't have a corner on it okay we're just a testimony that god can keep a marriage together even through stormy seasons okay we still working it out but I thank God the work ain't as hard as it used to be. <laughs> not for Lady Singleton. And not for me. All right. You know, because you learn as you go. Yeah, yeah. And as you go, you grow. Yeah. Amen. So just a little tidbit of this to everybody, all the married folk, and those of you who may ever get married. <laughs> Marriage is work. Yes, work it out. Okay, so one of the tidbits of, 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 of counsel that, that I give to married folk when they come to me and they go and do some stuff, I tell them to keep their eyes on the end goal. All right. Keep their eyes on the end goal. Yeah. So let me, let me put this in a sports metaphor. Uh, how many of y'all in here like, like uh, football? Just wave your hands at me, amen. Okay, all right. There's some female in here. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, amen. How many of y'all like boxing? Just raise your hand. Oh, gosh, okay. Um, how many of y'all like baseball? Hey, wrestling. Tumbling. Volleyball. Race time. Flip-flop. Bobsled. 
So, okay, oh, okay, I just found out, just checking in the house, just, just checking in the house. I'm checking y'all too, so I hope y'all talking back to me, amen. Y'all say, you know, football, amen. You could just put FB for football, okay, I know. All right, so how many of y'all seen some of those games or matches where the person you wanted to win or the team you wanted to win was way down? Look like a losing proposition. It's getting down to the end where it's like too late to come back. But then somehow or the other, your team won. Right? The, the, the guy you you squeezing for in the box and that the guy been getting beat every round like he stole something. Right? Eyes all swollen up, sometimes been deep, bleeding and everything else. And I mean, I've been knocked down a few times. I mean, your heart go out to the guy. It's like, oh man, just, just stay in the corner this time. Don't even come out. But he got heart. And his eye is on the end goal. To him, it ain't about all them rounds. For him, it's about the last round. And he want to be the one who wins. And I've seen matches where the guy's in there boxing and he's getting beat and you, you almost want to tell him, man, just run. Don't even, don't even try to box with him. Just run. Run around the ring. Run the clock out. <laughs> but then sometimes he come with a, a, a bolo punch way down Alabama somewhere. Come on here. And TKO's the guy in the last round. How could he do it? He kept his eye on the end goal. And too often in marriage, when folk are going through in their marriage, they lose sight of the end goal. You didn't get married to get divorced. When you got married, the end goal was for us to be together. Come on here. Now I know some folk they done been married and out of it. You, some of y'all glad. Some of you wish you were still with the first one. All that kind of stuff. But you're not with them. So enjoy the one you're with. Um, <laughs> amen. Come on now. That's serious. <laughs> um, no, but, but, but you got married to be married. Amen. All right. And so... Uh, 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 and and I, I didn't have this in my notes, so I know this is for somebody. Amen. You can make it if you just don't quit. Amen. 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 You got to trust God. Those storms will come. You're not going to get around that. Amen. And sometimes those storms do damage, just like the storms, the natural climatic storms. They come through and do damage. And they, you know, torn people's houses up, destroyed some houses and businesses and so forth. But then what happens? People come back and they rebuild. You have storms in your marriage, but it doesn't have to kill the marriage. You can rebuild. Amen. Oh, amen. 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 All right. All right. All right. Let's let's move on. So so uh, because many believers are stressing out, and that's not God's will for you. And most time, we don't enjoy stressing. Well, what? How do you know when you're stressing? Well, for one, a lot of folk don't even know they're stressing. Amen. It's the people around them that know they're stressing. Because yeah. anytime somebody says something to you, you you know, snapping their head off and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I mean, some folk just mean too. They ain't stressing. They just mean. But every so often, stress hit us. You know what I'm saying? All right. I, and I'm not total stress free. Every so often, it passed by my way. You could have said amen earlier. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. We talked about this at home. <laughs> no, but. But. Uh, Y'all making this too much fun. Um, but, but, but sometimes folks don't know they're stressing. Others do know you're stressing. And, and I, I, I want to kind of raise your consciousness to at least consider 
what people around you say about you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Because a lot of times you don't see you yes. like you are. That's true, Bishop. That's true, that's true, that's true. You don't see you like what you're showing people. Oh. Right? Okay, case in point, case in point. Now, y'all allow me this. I know this is kind of out there, but I'm pre-warning you. Now, let's say you've got one of them little green army men hanging out of your nose. <laughs> All right? You don't know it. But that's what you're showing everybody that look at you. Right? I mean, you, you got the guy on display. But you don't know it. This is sometimes how we operate. We're coming across in a way that we don't know how we're coming across to others. Right. So we need to value what somebody says. If they say you might need to wipe your nose, yeah. are you talking with them and they just do this? They might be signaling. They might not be willing to just like verbalize it. But they, yeah. Come on, that's like when you sit up at somebody's house. And it's getting late and they're like, oh, I'm so tired. Yeah. <laughs> they're talking to you. Read the mail. They say, go home. Leave. Your visit is done. <laughs> Come on, that's not always true, but sometimes it is. That's not, that's not always true, but sometimes folks try to, you know, they slide it to you like, hey, can you pick up on this? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, where, where are we going with this? Where we're going really, the whole thing is really about trusting God in the midst of whatever's going on in your life. So even if you're one of those persons who are stressing, that you can believe God to help reduce your stress levels. Amen. You see, because when you stress, let me share with you some things about stress. First, by definition, my definition is stress can be physical, mental, and or emotional. It is pressure often derived from undesired experiences, expectations, and uncertainties. So, so it's undesired stuff that causes bad stress. There's good stress and bad stress, but it's undesired stuff or unexpected stuff that causes uh, bad stress. And bad stress runs up your blood pressure. In fact, let me, let me share something with you. One of the things that commonly happen when it comes to uh, us being unsure about God having us is we get in fear. And, I, and last week, the message was live fearlessly. Right? Let me share with you at least four things that happen or reasons why people fear. One of the reasons people fear is because of a lack of knowledge. All right. They don't know how it's going to turn out. All right. They don't know what it's going to be like. And so it many times can cause fear. Fear is also caused by a lack of faith. All right. Because you don't have faith to believe, the opposite of that is doubt or fear. Number three. Many times fear comes because a person got distracted. They had their eyes on the Lord, but then they got their eyes off of him. That's kind of what happened with Peter. Peter had his eyes on the Lord when he was walking on the water, but then when he turned to the side and looked at the winds of the waves, he got distracted and he began to sink and feared and cried out, Lord, save me. But then number four is because they have forgotten. All right. This is why you need to give testimony. How many of y'all wish that we had testimony service in church more often? Anybody? Right. Okay, okay. Let me tell you something. Yeah, testimony in church is real, real good. And sometimes the fact that they don't, you know, we don't have those testimonies coming forth too much. You can say, oh man, that's kind of bad or that's, that's a little short of where we should be. But you know what's worse? 
when you don't tell your own testimony to yourself. When you don't tell your testimony outside of here. Come on here. If it's good enough for here, it ought to be good enough for outside of here. And it's important. Why is your testimony important? It is important because first and foremost, it glorifies God. Amen. That was a little soft. Amen. Amen. It glorifies God. Yes. Why else is it important? It reminds you of what God did. Amen. 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 The songwriter said, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Amen. Never forget how you set me free. Never forget how you brought me out. Never, no, never. Well, if you don't rehearse it, you may be liable to forget. We already have forgotten so much that God has done for us. And because we've forgotten, it holds us back. But I love when I'm able to read through the scripture and I read about the psalmist. David said, I once was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed make bread. He said, I'm remembering somebody else's testimony. I remember God did it for them from a child up. I remember as an adult, I still haven't seen it. So if God been faithful to them and God is not a respecter of person, I believe God will be faithful to me. David said he killed the lion and he called me to kill the bear. So because he gave me those two. I believe he'll give me this one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to talk about what the Lord has done for you. Some of us act like we're ashamed of where we came from. But let me tell you something, precious heart. If you didn't come from where you came from, you wouldn't be where you are. It is so. Sitting up in here, we got drug addicts. In my global audience, you got drug addicts. You got gang bangers. You got folk who've been incarcerated. You got folk who had trouble in school trying to learn. You had folk been through all kinds of stuff. And because they have been, they can help somebody else who's in it. Why? Because they've been there. But they came out and they know how to get out. Come on here, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you might feel like you want folk to celebrate. Well, glory to God, somebody can celebrate that they're not the only one going through what they've gone through because somebody else been through it and they came out of it and you can help somebody else get out of it. Amen. 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 Yes, 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 yes. You know, Lady Singleton is sometimes giving the testimony that this pastoral service, and I'm going to tell you, it takes a special grace on the spouse's life yes, yes. of a senior pastor. Amen. So whether it's male or female, mm -hmm. it takes a special grace on the life of the spouse. Now, I know some of my listening audience, they only believe a man can pastor that's fine if that's what you believe. I don't have to believe what you believe. Okay. I believe God can use anybody he wants to. That's what I believe. Amen. And he can use whatever he wants to. Listen, to pay the taxes, he used the fish. Told Peter, say, go out and fish. And the first fish you catch, look in his mouth, get the money, and go pay our taxes. So if God could use a fish, could not he use a woman? Huh? Oh, he said, if these don't praise me, the rocks would immediately cry out. If God could use rocks to praise him, could not he use a woman? <laughs> he said, well, a woman not supposed to usurp authority over a man. <laughs> What about fish? <laughs> fish had to give some man some money. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I'm moving up. all around. Moving all around. All around. But amen. Uh, uh, it, it, it can cause us to be in fear. It can cause us to be in fear. 
And, and that fear causes all kinds of adverse things to happen in our lives. And God really wants us to trust him in whatever you're dealing with. Whatever you're dealing with, God wants us to trust him because he's already gone before you and worked it out. You know, uh, Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Yeah. You got to know you have the capability. Thank you, Lord. Come on, tell somebody, say, I can, I can do all things all through, Christ through Christ who strengthens me. It is so. It is so. I don't know if you believe it, but you need to say it again if you ain't got that thing yet. Amen. You need to go through the week saying, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You might have just got a new position at work or just got a new job. I can do all things through Christ. You may have some struggles in your marriage. I can do all things through Christ. You have some struggles in parenting. I can do all things through Christ. Come on here, somebody. It is so. It is so. You got to know what you know that you know you know. Amen. If you know God's got you, how many believe God's really got you? Amen. No, for real. You really believe God has you. Yes. Well, you got to know that in the difficult seasons. Yes. You got to know what you know yes. that you know you know. Yes. Let me just share this with you. We're going to bring it in. Let me give you some effects of fear. I'll share with you some reasons that people fear, yeah, one of which is a lack of knowledge, a lack of faith because of getting distracted and because you forgot what the Lord has done. Mm -hmm. But now let me tell you some of the effects that fear has on you because fear affects you both physically and otherwise. All right. So one of the things that that fear causes is doubt and uncertainty. Whenever one is fearful, they doubt and they're uncertain. Your heart rate increases when you fear. Right? Anybody ever has somebody come up on you and say, boom! <laughs> Especially if it was in the dark. I mean, they got you in. Eyes get big as saucers. Come on, he almost fall out. Some folk, you got to peel them off the ceiling. Right? So your heart rate increases. Your blood pressure goes up. Some of you get shortness of breath. Physically, you get weak. You lose your strength. And it can cause two forms of paralysis. Fear can. One form of paralysis is where you can't think. The other form of paralysis is where you can think, but you can't move. Anybody ever been there? Just wait, baby. Come on. I've been there. Come on, Bishop. Listen, I remember real clear one one day, Lord Jesus. I was supposed to be going to battle, too. Yeah, time for war. And boy, I was so scared. Me and my little axe handle stayed right there together. I didn't move like I was a statue. Scared. Fear had done grip me. There's other times fear grip you and your thoughts. Yes, yes. You can't gather them. God doesn't want us to be in faith. He wants us to be in faith, church. Amen. Now, that, that, that was years ago, first of all. I was just a little boy. Okay, so yeah, just thought I'd unpack that for you. Amen. But God has already done it. He's already worked out things in your life. And one of the areas that sometimes folk fear is coming to Christ. And they say, if I came to the Lord, first off, I, I respect God and I don't want to play with him. So I'm going to wait until I get it together because I don't want to mess up. And so the devil uses that as a strategy from keeping us from surrendering to Christ. Amen. 
What he understands and knows is that we'll never clean ourselves up enough. He knows that. He knows you're serious, and so he knows if you ever make that move, you're going all the way. Why? Because that's how you see God. You see God as deserving your best, and you just don't believe you're there right now. Let me tell you today. God seen you before you came to this place yes. of desiring him in your life Amen. like you desire him now. Amen. And many live a long time wishing they were in that place where they could really just come and give it all to the Lord because they gave up this and they gave up that. But let me tell you, it's for us to come as we are. Yes, we I'm talking to those of you in my global audience audience as well as in this sacred space just come as we are listen we come with our faults our failures our weakness our flaws whatever it is we just come as we are and we come to a God that's able to do what no other power can do we come to a God that loves us better than anybody else ever could or ever would we come to a God that only wants the best for us and I have a saying when conditions are met, manifestation takes place. Amen. So when you meet the condition of coming to Christ, the manifestation happens. Your change takes place, glory to God. Listen here, just because the chicken lays the egg don't mean you're going to get a bitty. Are you here? The bitty is considered what the little chicklet is that comes out of the shell. So just because the chicken lays the egg doesn't mean you're going to get a bitty. No, you get a bitty when that, that egg is incubated properly. Come on, Bishop. But when it's incubated, on the inside of that shell, that, that chick is going to grow. It's going to form. And after a while, it gets to tapping. It gets to tapping on the membrane inside that shell. And it taps on that membrane until it's able to break the membrane. And then start picking at the shell and breaking the shell until it's able to come out and be a bitty. Let me tell you something. You come to Christ as a little egg. But if you'll be that on the inside, just keep on packing, glory to God. Just keep on packing. You'll break forth as the Lord has already ordained you to be. It is so. It is so. You got to understand, you coming to that place in your life is already done. It was done before the foundation of the world. God talks about to us in the scripture about be a predestinate. Yes, yes, yes. I can't go into that today. God willing, we'll pick that up Amen. on next Sunday. Amen. But what I want to do today is I want to invite those of you who don't know Christ as your personal Savior. Those of you who've been messing up royally. Come on here. Sometimes, you know, we can, we can <laughs> uh, not only backslide in sin, we can just be backstroking. Glory to God. <laughs> Vision. Come on here. But, but we know it's time to really straighten up and what some say fly right. Amen. Come on, God's been good enough that he deserves it. Amen. He deserves it, church. And I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for those of you that says, I'm not saved, but I want to be saved. Would you include me in the prayer? If that's you, I'm not going to call your name. I'm going to ask you to come up front or anything like that. I just want to know who I'm praying for. So if that's you today, say, I'm not saved, but I want to be saved. Would you include me in the prayer? Just signify with the elevation of your hands. Yes, I see your hand right there. Are there others today? So, I'm not saved, but I want to be saved. And my global audience, if that's you today, just write on the screen, save, S-A-V-E. I want the Lord to save me. I want the Lord to save me. Glory to God. But then there's so many others who have accepted Christ, but we just haven't been living this thing out as well as we should. And we know that, but we want to do better. Sometimes we just need strength in certain areas because we've fallen weak and fallen prey to some things, but we want to get it together. If that's you today, just lift your hand. I want to know who I'm praying for. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I see your hand. There are there others today. Yes, sir. I see your hand. Glory to God. Would you? Yes, sir. I see your hand. I see your hand there. 
Glory to God in my global audience. If that's you today, you say, yes, that's me. I would you include me in the prayer. I want to do it better on today and tomorrow than I did on yesterday and some of the days past. Would you include me in the prayer? Amen. You can put on the screen, just put pray. Would you pray for me? Pray for me. P-R-A-Y. Glory to God. Listen, you can be prayed for to accept Christ as your personal Savior today. You can also be prayed for that you be strengthened in your walk, recommitted in your walk, and your resolve to go after Christ Jesus. And, and if you have a church home somewhere else, you just go back to your church home and, and just do a great work for God right there. Glory to God. But I'm about to make another appeal. And this appeal is for those who, maybe this is your very first time, or perhaps you've been here before. But you don't have a church home. You believe that God would have you to be a part of this ministry. Let me tell you something. I want to be your pastor. I believe that God will use me instrumentally, strategically, and pivotally in your life to help you walk out your God-given purpose. I believe God will use this ministry to help you grow in your faith. Yes. So if that's you today, you say, yes, I need a church home. Would you include me in the prayer? I want to be a member of our of Jesus Ministries. You can signify with the elevation of your hands. I know in some churches they'll set chairs out front and they may say words such as the doors of the church are open. But right here, you could just signify with the elevation of your hand. If that's you today, right now you can just signify. Amen. In my global audience, if that's you, on the screen, just put VM for virtual member. You can be a virtual member wherever you are on the planet you can be a virtual member of this ministry. Listen, we will be covering you in prayer. And when it comes to accepting Christ, it's not about being in a set place in terms of physically, because God can reach you wherever you are, because wherever yes. you are, he already is. Yes. Amen? Yes. 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 Glory to God. So right on the screen, just put VM, B V M. Also, I'm going to ask them to put in there the phone number to the church, that's 585-262-6420. And those of you who raised your hand to accept Christ in your life, those of you who solicited prayer, those of you who say, I want to be a member, and I'm talking to my global audience right now. I want you to a prayer request. You requested prayer and or that you desire to be a member of this ministry. Amen. That's 585-262-6420. Let's pray at this time. Believers should be praying. Let's pray. Father, we honor and thank you now that you would love us enough as to send us your word. And then illuminate truths of your word at the level of our understanding. Thank you for these, your people, God. I believe that your word has fallen on good ground today. Every ear has heard. Every heart has received. I pray that now, God, that word would germinate and produce good, abundant, and remaining fruit to the glory of your name. Lord God, I ask now, Father, that as we go forward, you help us to resolve that you have already worked things out for us in our lives and we can rest in you, God. That is your will that we not go forth in fear or stressing, God, but that we just resolve that, God, you are with us. You've already gone before us and worked it out. And because you have worked it out, God, it's all good already. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God, I pray that the temperature of people's stress, especially those in the body of Christ, that that stress level goes down, God, that stress, that the devil uses to bring people blood pressure up to compromise their health and their well-being. God, I pray now for deliverance from it. In Jesus' name, any one of us, every one of us, Father, oh God, I know that you're able to do it. I pray your peace to fill that place, God, your peace to fill that space in our lives that we can rest in you, God, with the assurance that you, we are good, God, because you are a good God and you got us in your hands and you're watching out for us and you've already blessed us and, and we're just making our way in the journey to live out that blessing. God, I thank you for it now. 
I pray for those, Lord God, who lifted their hands to say they want you in their life. I pray that this day they would know that reality of Jesus Christ in their life. Those, God, who desire to be restored and want to rededicate themselves to you, God, that this day will mark a time in their life unlike any other. And the trajectory on their life will glorify you more than ever. And those, God, who said they want to be a member, that as they come forth in membership here at Ark of Jesus Ministries, it will only be good to them and for them. That it will only glorify you, God, and always be a benefit to the purpose, your kingdom purposes in our lives. I ask it now in Jesus' name. I thank you for it, and I believe I receive it and give you glory. And right now, I ask you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I ask you now to forgive me of all of my sin. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior and my Lord from this day forward. I believe, Father, that you hear my prayer and you granted my request. Therefore, I thank you for salvation in Jesus Christ. Today, my need is met. Amen. Come on and put your hands together and give God praise in the house. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, precious hearts. So often, the devil tries to get folk to feel like because you messed up, you're no longer on the team. You're no longer on God's team. Teach me. But if I can put it in a sports metaphor again, and let's think about something like basketball. And here it is, it's, it's the end of the game, and you're only one point away from winning, and you had the ball. You shot it, and you made no points. And your whole team may be a bit disappointed, but that doesn't make you be off the team. Right. Are you hearing? It's true. There are some others, other believers that's believing for you to hold on. Yes. They're believing for you to win in this race of life. And sometimes when we mess up, folk get disappointed. Because their expectation was that you were going to hold on. Your expectation might have been you were going to hold on. But that doesn't make you be off the team. You're still on the team. And I want to encourage you now. Let's get ready for the next game. Yes. Oh, my God. I, I don't know if y'all with me on this. Let's get ready because we're going to do it better. Amen. We're going all the way with the Lord. Hallelujah. Good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you receive this word to your life today? Yes. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise offering. Come on, somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, glory to God. My God. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. I believe that as a result of this message today and your reception of it, that you're going to resolve. There are some things in your life. It is done. Thank you, Jesus. You're not going to worry about it anymore. Hallelujah. You're not going to let that stuff hang over your head. You're not going to let that stuff mess you up. Why? Because you know God has already worked it out for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. My God, yes, Lord. I speak greater peace in your life right now. Yes, Lord. Receive it. Greater peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Also in my global audience, greater peace Amen. in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we're going to prepare to have the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist. Now, some of you, if there's anyone who will be partaking and they have not been served, I'm going to ask you to just signify with the elevation of your hands and they will serve you as the ministers and uh, the deacons come. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. For he is Lord. Those of you in our global audience, 
um, right where you are, I uh, know uh, uh, there's the, yes. Um, in our global audience, you can partake with us. It's up to you what you use. The scripture tells us that we're to do this as often as we do it in remembrance of the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus made. I can tell you that it is not our practice to restrict access to the Lord's table. All who have accepted Christ in their lives as their personal Savior are invited to participate with us without regards to religious affiliation or denomination. For we are one big family in Jesus. Amen. sacrifice, Lord Jesus, that you would make of yourself to hang out on Calvary's cross. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. To be speared on in the side. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To suffer on your back the stripes for our yes, healing Lord. Yes. and our deliverance. Yes, yes, Lord. And today, God, yes. we count this blessed Jesus. as we do this as an act of obedience. Yes. In remembrance of your sacrifice. Yes, and also this cup. Which represents the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. The blood that ran from Emmanuel. Yeah, yes, Lord. Yes, the blood Lord. that washes whiter than snow. Yes, thank you, Lord. The blood that will never lose its power. Never lose yeah. its power. The atoning blood. Yes, Lord. God, we take these things today. In agreement with your word to us yes. and an acknowledgement of your sacrifice and our relationship to you, yes. even through the blood. Yes. Let us all eat together. Let us all drink together. The Bible says they went out singing hymns. And I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Well, one day I saw Jesus die on the cross. Oh, I'm 
Amen. Amen. It's time to bring your offering. 